Now we again discuss the air passenger data. Now we do not want to use the built-in functions of R. We want to see the trend, take it out ourselves, take out the seasonality ourselves and uh, then fit in the residual. So how do you do it? So this is the airline passenger data. So let us just run it first and see the data. So this is how the data looks like. So the data comes month wise, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So if you want to check the seasonality of data, make sure that you have actually recorded the seasons. You could actually just record four seasons here, winter, spring, uh, fall, summer. So whatever seasons you want, but you have to record in terms of seasons if you want to talk about seasonality. If you do not record the data in terms of seasons, then you cannot take the seasonality out. So let us see this airline passenger. Let us see the cycle AP. So cycle means that there are 12 cycles. One, two, three, four, for every month there is a cycle. So we are going to take out seasonality according to these 12 cycles. Now time, time is according to the year. So 1949 to 1950 and this January is 1949, February is 1949.083. That means you have added 1 by 12 to it. Here you have added 2 by 12 to it, 3 by 12 and so on. So this is just splitting the year into different months. So November is obviously 11 by, uh, December is 11 by 12, November is 10 by 12 and so on. So this is just splitting the time up. The third is the model. Now what you have to do is you have to run the regression first because you cannot fit time series on regression. You have to first take the regression out and then fit the time series. So for the regression, you have to take the time out and you have to factor out the cycles. So this part, this factor part is the regression on seasons. So this is model one. Model two is exactly the same as model one, but I have z added zero to it because I do not want to consider any intercept. So you can run either of these two models. I'm going to run the one with zero in it without the intercept. So let us run these three lines now. So this is what we get. So this was our call. These are the coefficients. Time comes out to be 3.192. And here it gives you uh, the probability is always less than 2 times 10 to the power of minus 16. So all these estimates are significant. The p values are really, really low. So all these estimates are different from 0. So all cycles are different, all times are different. You can actually find confidence intervals of each one of them, but just focus on p values right now. Since the p values are less than 0 0.05, we are going to accept that these values are different from zero. So all these values are different from zero. So that is it. So P value here is less than this. So the model is very significant. So you have, you take out the, uh, you have taken the season out, you have taken the time out. So this was the model and this was a summary. The time series works on the residuals of the model. That is, the model, whatever is left after you take the time out and the season out is called residuals. So M3 is the residuals. So let us run these two now. So this will give you a partial autocorrelation function, which looks like this. So now you can fit on M3, you can fit your time series, whatever you want to do. And uh, that is, uh, this is the same way of taking the seasonality out of your data. If you do not want to rely on R to take it out for you, you can do this.